Welcome to Senior Strategies, Tools for the Caregiver with Amy Decker and Shane Silver. Join us on each show where you're going to enjoy a lively conversation that's going to connect you to the tools and resources that you'll need to coordinate care for the seniors in your life. We are so happy that you joined us. Hi, welcome to Senior Strategies. I'm Amy Decker, and I am Director of Client Services for Senior Helpers, South Palm Beach County. And I am Shane Silver, co-owner of The Silver Team at Keller Williams Realty. I am a Seniors Real Estate Specialist, and I am a caregiver. And we have had such excellent guests, I have to say, since our little maiden voyage in May. Yes. Um, we've had some wonderful guests. I know our last show, we had uh, Josh Rosenberg and Robert Seeger. They were partners with the Kelly Kronberg um, law firm. And they had so many interesting things talking about estate planning. Um, they talked about federal estate taxes. So if you weren't able to tune into that, be sure to go to our YouTube page or our Facebook page, which is seniorstrategies.pb mm -hmm. um, for both, because I think there was a lot of things that I found very interesting. I didn't know There was about. a lot that I learned from them. They yeah. were wonderful guests. And you can watch all of our other shows, too. So if you've missed any of them, you can rewatch them on that. Our next show after today, which we've got some excellent guests today we're excited to talk about. But our next show, we're going to have Claudia Wechter. She is with Senior Advantages. She's going to talk about placement and the challenges of placing somebody in the perfect spot um, to give them their forever home. And then we also have Ellen Goodwin from Artifact, which is an app for saving memories instead of stuff. It helps you digitize a way to organize your stuff and capture the meaning behind the objects, which is great when you are downsizing or a family member or senior is downsizing and they can't keep all their things, but the memories and the sentimentality of it all means so much. So it's a great way to preserve that and pass down those memories to their family. So I'm excited to have her as well. Me too. So be sure to, to tune into that show. That's going to be wonderful. Um, so some of the things that have gone on this past week, number one, that we had 58 degree weather. Yay! Thus, I have a coat and boots. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be able to wear these for maybe two more hours and I'm going right, to go back exactly. to flip-flops. Yeah, exactly. But we're just excited about the cool weather. Um, we also had senior healthcare coordinators as a networking event that I am on the board. And we had a, uh, a charity event at the Game of Axes in Boynton Beach on Military. We have it there every year. And this year, the recipients were from the Boynton Beach Soup Kitchen and the American Parkinson's Disease Association. And we were able to raise thousands for both. It was so exciting. It was, the turnout was just phenomenal. It's always a great event. Yes, always a great event. Yes. So throwing axes and being able to just hobnob with other professionals in the community. We had five. While giving back. While giving back. Right. Exactly. And we had five um, restaurants that donated food for a good cause. So that part was wonderful. Um, but we just really felt like it went to such a good cause. And I think even with Parkinson's, there's so much more that we need to learn about um, just Parkinson's awareness. You know, we get so much for Alzheimer's or mm -hmm. breast cancer or other things that we talk about. But when it comes to Parkinson's, there's so many things that we don't know. Um, I even took a class to become certified. And... Um, these are some of the things that I actually had Desiree Mearns, who runs the Florida chapter, put some information together for me. So she said there are 90,000 new diagnoses of Parkinson's every year. That means every six minutes, there's a new Parkinson's diagnosis. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. 240 people diagnosed with Parkinson's on an average day. Wow. Approximately 1 million people in the U.S. are now living with Parkinson's. And this part was interesting. 10 to 20% of those diagnosed are under the age of 50. Yes, it's getting younger. I did read that recently. Yes. So the Florida chapter, which is what, what we donated, the, the recipients received from our, our uh, game of accidents, um, is a very unique chapter because they have the opportunity to work with those that have Parkinson's within their community. Um, they work with the University of Miami, the Miller School of Medicine, the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, and the University of Florida. All of those get grants to do research for Parkinson's. Um, 
and it's just it's a great group that get together all the time just to see what they can do better for their communities and because the adpa florida chapter is kind of developing their own network they will go into assisted living buildings mm -hmm. they will talk to family members as well as people with parkinson's to see what it whatever it is they need so they're able to get extra care extra support they have educational programs um, they even teach uh, first responders um, and fitness professionals how to deal with people with Parkinson's because it's completely different. Their body Absolutely. freezes up. They've got different things they can do to help them just to feel better. So it is a great yeah. organization and a great resource. If you or someone you know is newly diagnosed with Parkinson's, it's a great place to start. It's a great, it's a great place, place to, to start. start. It absolutely is. And if you get in touch with the ADPA, they will do whatever they can to help you with equipment or or um, any kind of therapy, any kind of groups that you can get together with. Because like anything else, as a caregiver, you feel like you're alone. Mm -hmm. So they'll introduce you to other people that are dealing with that, especially. So. Again, our fundraiser was was for them. I was also the Boynton Beach Soup Kitchen that was very graciously. They were very excited about it. Um, the Boynton Beach Soup Kitchen has a Meals on Wheels program for seniors. That's right. And they're great. So you can look them both up. All that information, too, is on our Facebook page. So you can look that up and see what that was all about. <laughs> and you have a fundraiser. We do. We mm -hmm. do. So I am on the board for the Partnership of Eight. Partnership for Aging of Palm Beach County, and we have our annual fundraiser coming mm -hmm. up. It is November 15th. It is at the Brews Room in Boynton Beach at 5 p.m. Um, we do it every year. It's one of my favorite events. We do a silent auction, raffle prizes. You can meet a lot of individuals and businesses and companies that serve the senior um, industry, serve mm -hmm. seniors and their families and their caregivers. It's a wonderful event. Again, it is Wednesday, November 15th at Brews Room in Boynton Beach. Um, and for more information or to register, you can go to www.pbcpfa.org backslash events. We'd love Say to have you. Say one more you. time. www.pbc for Palm Beach Palm County, Beach County mm -hmm. PFA for Partnership for Aging, dot org backslash events. And all of the proceeds from that event go to benefit transportation disadvantaged seniors. So good. We have talked. They've before. done this for years. We have done this for years, um, and it's our one of our one of our favorite ways to give back. Um, and what we mean by transportation disadvantaged seniors is that a lot of seniors who have chosen to age in place mm -hmm. cannot drive right. and do not drive and do not have someone who can take them to their doctor's appointments or the grocery store. Or let's say it's an elderly couple living together and one is in the hospital or one is in rehab and they want to go visit their spouse. Um, uh, the dollars we raise are divvied up to several different local organizations that provide palm tran passes mm -hmm. for seniors so some of them go to doctor's offices some of them go to our mid-county senior center um, we work with the palm tran which is um, tra non-medical transportation for seniors i think the rides are three dollars Right, so I you think figure three dollars if you have a spouse that wants to go visit their their spouse in in a rehab or in a hospital, they want to go once a day. I exactly, mean, that's, exactly. That really adds up. So we ra we actually raise money and we pre buy coupons so that uh, these organizations can give these coupons to the seniors that need them and help with transportation, so they're not so isolated and lonely. I think it's wonderful, and I was on the board for PFA for many years too, and a part of that group for a long time, and they are phenomenal. It's a phenomenal group to be a part yeah. of. Last year, we raised enough money to provide over 600, close to 700 uh, transportation rides. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Please join us. Please join us. Um, and you can always find more information on our Facebook um, page as well. Yeah. And we actually have a lot of events coming up, but you had a couple other things you wanted to talk about with um, just some other things, no, or should we go to the it. next commercial? No, that's so it. So we have... 
We have some great guests coming up. They're actually, uh, they're going to be coming from Massachusetts. One is in the city of Kelmsford. The other is Nantucket Island. We have Olivia Companion and Kylie Murphy. Olivia is the owner of a company called Purple Hydrangea. And you're going to, we're going to meet both of them after this commercial break and talk more about how they became part of this and how they became friends and how the company all started. So please join us after the commercial break. Welcome to Allegro Boynton Beach, the epitome of luxury senior living. Discover a lifestyle free from maintenance worries or experience gentle support tailored to your daily needs. Choose from our exclusive offerings of independent living, assisted living, and memory care, each designed to provide a personalized experience of utmost comfort and care. Indulge in a maintenance-free retirement or embrace the support you deserve. Surrounded by the finest amenities and compassionate staff. At Allegro Boynton Beach, luxury meets a vibrant community where every moment is filled with joy, purpose, and peace of mind. Experience luxury senior living at its finest. Contact us today to schedule your visit and discover the unmatched lifestyle awaiting you at Allegro Boynton Beach. You love your mom and dad, and they've always been there for you, always taken care of you. But now they could use a hand, and sometimes more help than you can provide. Thankfully, they're senior helpers, experts in Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's care. We can help you transition from a hospital stay to home, or just help your loved one with assistance with their everyday needs. Visit SeniorHelpers.com to learn more. Discover why Senior Helpers is senior care, only better. Are you considering selling your home? Are you considering downsizing? Are you considering a transition to an independent or assisted living community? Are you considering moving to be closer to your family? Do you need a home more conducive to aging in place? If so, you want to talk to Shane Silver, co-host of Senior Strategies and Senior Real Estate Specialist. Shane and her real estate team are extremely knowledgeable and experienced when it comes to helping seniors and their families make life's important transitions. Shane will guide you every step of the way, making the transition as stress-free as possible. To schedule a no-obligation consultation, call 561-735-3030. About 60 million baby boomers refuse to leave a financial burden on their loved ones, but 70% of them have unsuitable life insurance or are unaware that it may expire. With final expenses significantly rising, don't leave your family unprotected. If you have an old policy or purchased guaranteed coverage, don't take any risks. Gain peace of mind with a policy review. Mention Senior Strategies and it's free. Call Pivotal Life today at 561-412-5500. That's 561-412-5500 because family and legacy are worth protecting. Welcome back to Senior Strategies with Amy and Shane. Coming up next are more tools and resources you will need to make your journey of caregiving a little easier. For more information or to be a guest on the show, please contact us at 561-800 six six five four and now on with the show so we are so excited about our two new guests that we're going to be um we are doing actually a video interview this time we are and so we have first of all we have olivia companion and she is from kelmsford massachusetts but first of all we have to say congratulations olivia because she just got married a month ah, ago congratulations so she's very happy and glowing um and we're excited to talk with kylie murphy who is also her friend um and how they ended up working together it's a beautiful story um, but we would like to turn this over to you, Olivia, so you can tell us more about um, how you got with Purple Hydrangea and your lovely friend, Kylie, and the story of how you met. Welcome. Welcome, Olivia and Kylie. I'm going to throw it over to you, you first, Olivia. Tell us a little bit about you and, and your story. Yeah, so people always ask me, you know, how, how did this start? How did I get here? And really, it kind of fell into my lap when I graduated college. Um, I was 
offered a job as a case manager at my local elder services. And I took the job. I didn't have a job for graduation. I didn't really think about senior care as something that was going to be my long term path. But here I am 10 years later. So when I worked in case management, I really liked the mission of staying home and people aging in place. And then I wanted to go further into specifically dementia care. So I went to work as an activities director at a brand new memory care facility. And that's where I met Kylie's grandmother, Connie. And we became, we were connected at the hip. We were pretty much the same person. We liked the same things. We didn't like the same things except cheese. She didn't like cheese. I love cheese. <laughs> Who doesn't like cheese? She Who had doesn't a bad like experience. Cheese? She had a bad experience at Girl Scout camp, I think it was. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> how old, how yeah. old is Connie or how old was Connie? Um, when she was in Bridges working with Olivia for the first time, I want to say she was like mid 80s. Kylie, please introduce yourself so we, our listeners and our guests know who you are. Hi, I'm Kylie Murphy. I am um, a friend of Olivia's. We met through my grandmother, Connie. And um, like Olivia said, they were attached at the hip and then I joined in. Joined the group. Awesome. That's yep, wonderful. I joined the group. I'm afraid That's you guys can't wonderful. hear me. No, you're good. I can hear you. Oh, you're good. You're good. So go ahead, Olivia. So you met Connie. You were joined at the hip. Neither of you like cheese. Yep. <laughs> what was the next? What was she, the next? I step? love cheese. She didn't like. Cheese. She didn't like cheese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we knew. You know, I, I was a director at the memory care, and we had. At, when she moved in, we didn't have a ton of residents, but it was brand new, so it was building, and we were building this from the ground up. It was brand new, brand new construction, the whole thing. And in the professional side of care, as I'm sure you guys know, sometimes the personal piece can get lost because people can be understaffed or they're overwhelmed or there's just not enough time in the day. And I didn't even know that Kylie's piece of the family existed until she left that facility and went to a nursing home. And I bumped into Kylie's mom and both of us were like, who are you? Who, who are you two? We bumped into each other in Connie's room and it unfolded that there was this whole part of Connie's family that we didn't know about at the assisted living. And Aww. I don't know that we, I don't know that we ever would have known them if she hadn't moved to that nursing home. And that was the piece to me that clicked and said, we don't have enough time for the personal. And if there is enough time, we're just not getting there. We're not, we're not doing good enough. We can do better than this. So I started Purple Hydrangea and I work with families who are caring for someone living with dementia, any form of dementia. And I do one-on-one -on -one consultations with them. I host a woman's support group and I teach classes online and in person. And I really just want to close that gap. I want to close the pieces that aren't that aren't really connecting. And hopefully more people will find their Connie's and their Kylie's because Aww. I never I never would have met them. Yeah. And How did you come up with the name Purple amazing. Hydrangea? So purple is really the color of dementia, specifically of Alzheimer's. Um, purple is my favorite color, so that kind of matched. But um, when I was with Connie one day, she said to me that hydrangeas were her favorite flower. And Aww. I'm not a huge flower person, but I do love a hydrangea. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's kind of how purple hydrangea happened. It was a mix of what I love and what Connie loved. And how was that for you, Kylie, when you, when you bumped into Olivia, realizing Olivia was just connected at the hip with Connie, and now you've got a relationship with everybody. It was really amazing because um, when Grammy first moved into the assisted or the memory facility, 
I didn't really know much. My aunts were responsible for all of the decisions. And because I was away at grad school and then living in Boston, I wasn't informed of a lot of things. So being able to have that connection with Olivia let me know things that my aunts may not have felt comfortable telling me or didn't want to tell me. But because I grew up with my grandmother, I wanted to know everything. And I wanted to um, just be able to support her in the best way I could. And Olivia helped me with that. That's wonderful. wonderful. Communication really is the key. So to get somebody, you know, Who Shane, I know. understands. Yes, and Shane that understands that part. How do you combine, right, the professional caregiver and the family caregiver? And how do you bring those together and bring the, bridge that gap? Because... Um, I just had an issue yesterday and today where um, I had to call my parents' uh, community and say, hey, you need to keep me in the loop. You know, I walked into this situation. No one told me what was going on. So sometimes it's as simple as a phone call, but it's really important. You know, I think sometimes a as the family, I know that it is stressful even on the professional caregivers who do this for a living, that it is stressful. And you're right, if you're caring for multiple people, um, things can fall through the cracks. But I think for, I, I really applaud you, Olivia, for seeing that this gap really did need to be bridged. And I appreciate that. And then, so then you moved on, um, you were talking about the Montessori version or the Montessori style. What, what is that? So curious to hear about Yeah. Because <laughs> when I think of Montessori, so, I think of when my kids were little, it was like a Montessori school mm -hmm. that I wanted to put them yeah. in because they really focused on things um, that were educational, like Montessori toys mm -hmm. I'll buy for my granddaughter. So how did you mm -hmm. take that facet for dementia care? So the easiest way to describe it is the whole person, looking at the whole picture, not just looking at the disease. And we want to look at that anyway, whether it's a Montessori-based approach or not. So a lot of the times we see the dementia, we don't see a lot of the other pieces. But if we can modify how we do things, whether that's an activity or whether that's a care time, personal care, a meal time, a social interaction, if we can modify that to the person's ability and see the whole person, see what their strengths are and play off of those and not just see the disease, that's basically what it is. You wanna support them as much as they need and let them take the lead from there. So when I started at the memory care uh, where Connie was, and I went through the orientation, I specifically remember one of the things they told us was, you will never see crayons in this facility. And I thought, well, why? They're easier to grab. They're, you know, they're a little bit bigger. They're brighter colors. And the point was, you wouldn't give an adult without dementia a crayon to color with. You would probably give them a colored pencil. It's a little bit more dignified. It's not as childish. Wow. So that's that. really the point. It's right. It's the level of wow. detail yeah. where you're looking at modifying with dignity and looking at the whole person and not just their disease. I think that's important. I read I read a, a little quote the other day, and I don't remember it word for word, so I apologize if I mess it up. But it says it's not the disease that kills them or not the disease that bothers them, but how we react to it. And I think that goes to mm -hmm. what you say, right? Like if we wouldn't give a crayon to someone without disease, why would we give a crayon to someone with the disease? And I'm gonna use that analogy, if you don't mind, from here on in, because mm -hmm. I think it really is a good analogy, right? Sometimes we think about, I know that we do have to find modifications for people that are aging, whether it's physical issues or dementia, we do have to find modifications, but there are modifications that we can put in place where they will retain their dignity. And very often like the big crayon or a big piece of chalk or something like that, it's easier for the caregiver versus giving them a pencil that now has to be sharpened. And so this is like mm -hmm. you said, it's giving them the dignity that they deserve as, a, as an adult, as a mature adult right. versus a small child coloring in a coloring book. And it might take you a little bit more time as the caregiver, you know, you have to have a little bit more patience to really have this be the way that you deal with your person. It takes a little bit more time. It takes a little bit more effort. And there is a little bit of planning behind everything that you need to do. But in the long run, 
the longer we can keep somebody independent, the better. You know, if I am going to open up the bottle cap and take it off of Kylie's water bottle, I am really just encouraging taking away that skill for her. And she's not going to be able to do that if I've taken over that task. But the longer she can do that for herself, the longer she'll stay independent. That's wonderful. So you said you started... Um, so you started at the ground up with this building and you thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to get involved in this, but this certainly is not the career that I'm going to be following. What was the right. passion? What, what was the burning passion in you that you decided this is where I have to stay? This is where I need to be. Once I bumped into Kylie's mom at the nursing home and really it was a moment of shock of who are you, um, and I remember her saying, oh, I've seen your name in the, in the guest book a bunch of times and I had no idea who you were either. It was a slap in the face. It, was, it hit me in the face of how many other families are like this? How many other parts to the, to parts to the puzzle are missing? You know, if we had known that there was more family involved, could things have been different? Could she have stayed in memory care longer and not needed the assist, uh, not needed the nursing home? Maybe not. Could things have looked a little bit different? What would have changed if we had the whole picture? So when I made the leap and started this, I started this in April of 2022. And um, it just, it kind of just spoke to me. I don't, I don't really know where it came from. It just kind of hit me that I thought I, I have to do this now. Um, Connie is no longer with us and I hope she would be proud of this. Oh, that is so sweet. I am sure she is. Yes. I am sure she I yes. say, I could totally jump in and say that my grandmother would be incredibly proud of you. And I also want you to know, not knowing that like my mom, my dad and I were involved in Grammy's life is completely on the um, The community side. Yeah. Yeah, Like a lot of the communication was Mm. um, from my aunts, not so much the facility. So there was a disconnect, I think, between my aunts letting people know who was involved in my grandmother's life as well as we never crossed paths. Like I never saw Olivia until my grandmother was in the nursing home. And I have to say we are in senior helpers is in many of the assisted living communities in South Palm Beach County. We have some buildings that appreciate us reaching out personally to the family members. They encourage it that we speak one on one with them. We have others that absolutely positively do not want us reaching out to them. They want to be the one that reaches out. So it's just it's really the mood of or the I don't even know what word to use, but it's whatever that that, that community this. is all about. Some really want us to talk to the family members and get involved and, you know, the family dynamics. That's really the biggest portion of my job. Others absolutely do not want but us reaching so out. But it's so important to keep that family involved so that we know, you know, when I walked into a situation this past weekend, I saw something I didn't like, but I didn't know that it was being worked on. I didn't know that it had been an issue. If someone had reached out to me sooner, like I said, I've always done Everything that this community asked me to do for my parents, I've always been there. I've always done it, but I can't do it if you don't tell me that there's an issue or that there's a problem, right? And that goes with knowing the whole person, right? So we happen to be local. There's a lot of families down here in Florida where their family of of the senior is not local, right? Right. But everything from knowing what they like, knowing what they like to eat. My father was recently in a um, rehab center. Um, after a stint in the hospital and he's been through this before and I will say this is the first time ever someone from the nurse from the rehab walked in and said asked him a bunch of questions do you like to eat breakfast are you a breakfast eater do you like hot breakfast do you like cold breakfast do you want to come to the dining room for lunch do you not I mean no one ever asked him that right but that goes with their experience and that's in any community how do you don't you want to to know their preferences and likes their preferences and, wants. and likes right. i mean that can only make it easier even mm-hmm. for a person with dementia mm-hmm. right i mean we go to mm-hmm. a restaurant now with my mom and she orders something off the menu and i'm like oh my god she never in her life would have ever <laughs> ordered that never she doesn't like it and sometimes i have to redirect her cuz i know it's going to show up and she's going to 
not eat and it. And you're going to have to eat it then. Right, right. <laughs> I'm going to get stuck eating it. Right, right. But, but to me, that just seems like something that would come naturally to a community that's caring for your loved ones, that they would want to know their likes and preferences, that they would want to know their family. But very often it's easier just to make it cookie cutter, right? You go in there, this is what you're getting, this is what you're eating, this is when you're going to color, this is when you're going to go to... They, they, they really don't... For, I know, you know it's hard it's, when they're yeah, caring for a right, lot of people. Right. I understand that. I understand that. But that's really, Olivia, why... So, so tell us more about what... How you educate caregivers so that they are more personally involved? How does this work? Yeah, so it's so last night I actually taught a class and it was not dementia specific, but it's one of the few topics that I teach that are for any seniors. And it was on resources and public benefits that are available to any senior in the state of Massachusetts. So we went through this. You know, I had the whole presentation and it was a it is a pretty small class, so it was nice and individual and we had time for questions and I looked at the clock and we had gone half an hour over and it just the conversation was just flowing and I, I thought, you know, I wish there were so many more people that would take advantage of classes like these and learn what is available to them. Uh, one woman actually said, how would we even know this if you didn't just tell us that? How would we know about this? It was about um, pre-filled pill packs. So if you don't know this, you can ask your pharmacy. If you're taking a bunch of pills, you can ask the pharmacy to fill a bubble pack and they're labeled with the date and the time that you need to take them. And some pharmacies will deliver them to you. And it's just so much easier than spending your whole Sunday filling out a pill box for somebody. Um, but as I was explaining this, a woman said, how would we even know that was available if you didn't tell us that? My pharmacy didn't ask me if I wanted that. Right. Um, and it truly is a lifesaver. So, we have several clients yeah. that between CVS, Walgreens, even Amazon now offers that service where mm -hmm. they have the blister packs because it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, you put their pill boxes together, but they're, they're, they feel that they're independent. They feel a little headstrong and then they go and mess the pills up. So now we've had a nurse go in and fix all their pills. And now there's three missing out of that one and they add the three into this one. Yep. And by liability, you know, our, our nurses go in to do the med management, then we do the med reminders. We're liable if they down something that right. they shouldn't be. So you're right, those right. blister packs are a godsend. Switching to that made yes. all the difference, yep. Yes, yep. because like they Especially said, you know, I don't traveling. need that, I can feel, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can fill my own pill boxes. I don't need help doing that. And then they end up messing them up. And it was now my Sunday night activity. Was it was my Sunday night activity. Mm -hmm. Is doing the pill boxes. Yep. Now I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Now that's what we do. And so who normally attends your groups? So the classes are open to the public. Um, if I do teach online classes, I've had people all over the world. I've had people in Switzerland. I've had people in oh, Sweden. I've had people wow. in Spain. The magic of you know being able to teach online. Um, the one-on-one -on -one clients that I work with and individual coaching. You know, when I teach a class, it's a broad topic, right? The one constant with dementia is that there's change. So if I teach a class to you three right now, it's going to be pretty broad. It won't be specific to your person. But if I work with you one on one, I can really get into the nitty gritty stuff. Those clients, typically, I can't do too much out of the time zone, because then I'd be up at, you know, two in the morning working with someone in Sweden. Um, but I do work with people one on one. And then the support group that I have is specifically for women that are dementia caregivers and you could be anywhere in the country as long as you can be there on the eastern timeline <laughs> wow that's great that's and, great and about how many people do you get to your support group so the support group right now consistently people coming i would say is around 15 people um, this group has been together since the very beginning of COVID. It started as a group that was through the Alzheimer's Association, and I have stepped away from working with the Alzheimer's Association, so now this is just strictly a purple hydrangea group. Um, but I think on the roster, we have almost 35 women. Wow. wow. And by word of yeah. mouth, you know, like the one woman said, how would we have know this if you if you didn't tell us this? So all you need right. is for that woman to tell five of her friends by word of mouth all that they've learned in your group. And how wonderful mm -hmm. is that? 
another testament to really the benefit of, of support groups, especially for caregivers. Absolutely, because with education comes responsibility. And you know what? Very often our caregivers, like we've talked about before, they feel alone, they're stuck in their house, they don't have tools and strategies to know what to do, or the kids live up north and the grandma lives down here or the parents live down here. So when we can give education like what you're talking about, all the guests on our show really, mm -hmm. We try to bring everybody on because we've got people from the UK that are listening in right now. We've got um, Canada. Canada. We have uh, most of Florida and lots of the United States. So little by little, just like you, it's like by word of mouth, they're going to find out these jewels that you can share with them. Um, and that's, I mean, that's part of our mission too, is to really show the caregivers that there are resources out there that they probably don't know exist and they probably don't even know that they know that they need it right or something they haven't thought about that they may need in the future or they may need now that they don't know exists that number one they're not alone and number two there are resources out there for them right right so a lot of the to time oh. Oh, oh go ahead so many people talking go about ahead kylie it. Ahead, i was kylie. just saying that i went to one of the support group meetings and I wish I had found mm -hmm. something like that before Grammy had passed, because it was so nice to talk to others who may have been in a similar situation as me, because I wasn't specifically the caregiver, but I was impacted by my grandmother's dementia. And it was just nice to talk with other people who were having a similar experience. And there's just nothing like it. There's camaraderie there. So Shane and I hold yeah. a support group um, at Allegro in Boynton Beach. It's every third Thursday of the month. It's actually coming up. It's, it's this Thursday. This Thursday at 3 o'clock. So if anybody would like to attend, we'd love to have you there. And very often, I think the first few classes we went with a schedule. Okay, here's what we're going to talk agenda. about. Agenda. Here's what we're going to talk about. Agenda. This is what we're going to discuss. We're going to let everybody in. But it is morphed into this most beautiful um, where everybody goes around the room. They talk about who they are and why they're there. Most of them, it's because of their spouses. Some of them are there because of their sibling. Or and their a, a lot parents. of them are sharing, they're giving advice to each other, yes. right? Because they've all been there. They're all in the this, this same boat. And it say, at different them. stages, yes. at different stages. And sharing their story and sharing what's helped for them. And there have been women in the group, even men in the group, who have become friends, right? right? Because they're both, mm. in, they're all in the same situation. So they go and have coffee together and they go and have lunch together. Right. And it, but they'll introduce themselves and start crying. I'm here because of my wife, and this is not what I signed up for, and she's got hallucinations, and when I leave, she thinks I'm cheating on her, and I don't know what to do. Come to find out there's three other gentlemen that are in the group dealing with the same thing. So their camaraderie of just getting together, knowing you're not by yourself, we are all dealing with this together. Um, there's just something about a support group that yep. you just, you support each other. And as much as we'll have a clinic, uh, a, a social worker there, an LCSW, yep. they'll be there, to orchestrate it, but very often the crowd takes over. We are completely off topic mm -hmm. and we go with whatever whatever anyone's dealing with right. in the room. Right. And probably the same goes for you too, Olivia, depending on, on who's got the who's yeah. got the biggest need for that class. Yeah, I typically with a support group I always go in with a plan of a topic in case we have one of those months where it's crickets and nobody wants to say anything. Right. And that's very rare. I think in three years I've only needed to do that maybe twice. Yeah. Um, but every November, um, we talk about holidays because holidays get you know kind of crazy. And in December, what I do every um, support group meeting is talk about the rose and the thorn. So I have people talk about the best part of their year and the lowest point of their year as a oh, caregiver. Uh -huh. And it's interesting because some people's rose might be someone else's thorn and you know we're all kind of on a different journey here but the common thread is that you're caring for someone living with dementia and you're right the the conversation just goes and you know sometimes i can just sit back and they can have at it right. and there's some times where it's a nice place to step in and add some education and it's just you know, these women have gotten really close over the last three years, and it's really cool to see. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I'm glad to hear that that some of those groups are going on elsewhere as well. Thank you, ladies, so much. We do have to take a really quick commercial break, yep. but please join us back after the commercial as we finish up with Olivia and Kylie. 
Welcome to Allegro Boynton Beach, the epitome of luxury senior living. Discover a lifestyle free from maintenance worries or experience gentle support tailored to your daily needs. Choose from our exclusive offerings of independent living, assisted living, and memory care, each designed to provide a personalized experience of utmost comfort and care. Indulge in a maintenance-free retirement or embrace the support you deserve. Surrounded by the finest amenities and compassionate staff, at Allegro Boynton Beach, luxury meets a vibrant community where every moment is filled with joy, purpose, and peace of mind. Experience luxury senior living at its finest. Contact us today to schedule your visit and discover the unmatched lifestyle awaiting you at Allegro Boynton Beach. You love your mom and dad, and they've always been there for you, always taken care of you, but now they could use a hand and sometimes more help than you can provide. Thankfully, they're senior helpers, experts in Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's care. We can help you transition from a hospital stay to home or just help your loved one with assistance with their everyday needs. Visit seniorhelpers.com to learn more. Discover why Senior Helpers is senior care, only better. Are you considering selling your home? Are you considering downsizing? Are you considering a transition to an independent or assisted living community? Are you considering moving to be closer to your family? Do you need a home more conducive to aging in place? If so, you want to talk to Shane Silver, co-host of Senior Strategies and Senior Real Estate Specialist. Shane and her real estate team are extremely knowledgeable and experienced when it comes to helping seniors and their families make life's important transitions. Shane will guide you every step of the way, making the transition as stress-free as possible. To schedule a no obligation consultation, call 561-735-3030. About 60 million baby boomers refuse to leave a financial burden on their loved ones, but 70% of them have unsuitable life insurance or are unaware that it may expire. With final expenses significantly rising, don't leave your family unprotected. If you have an old policy or purchased guaranteed coverage, don't take any risks. Gain peace of mind with a policy review. Mention Senior Strategies and it's free. Call Pivotal Life today at 561-412-5500. That's 561-412-5500. Because family and legacy are worth protecting. Welcome back to Senior Strategies with Amy and Shane. Coming up next are more tools and resources you will need to make your journey of caregiving a little easier. For more information or to be a guest on the show, please contact us at 561-800-6654. And now on with the show. Thank you for joining us and coming back. We are today talking with Olivia Companion and Kylie Murphy from Purple Hydrangea Dementia Support. We could probably talk to you ladies forever. This has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. I can't believe how much time has gone by already, but you've got so much to share and I think there's just beautiful things that you can share with us. And so one of the things that Shane and I were thinking of, so, so, so Kylie, if you could think of two really important things that you would like to share with our viewers and our listeners of what was the most helpful with Connie, what would be something that you would like to share that has really moved you or impressed you about what Olivia has done? Or some advice for or other some caregivers. Advice, right. Yeah. Um, so I think the thing that I would love to share with everyone is that even at its hardest, um, because I had to go and visit my grandmother at a nursing home, was just making sure that I saw her consistently. So even though it was really hard for me to see her not be who I grew up with, it was, um, it made her day when I would go in and she would see me. She wouldn't always remember who I was, but when she saw me, she immediately lit up. So there was some part of her that remembered if she couldn't even recall 
exactly that I was her granddaughter. She knew I was important to her, but she didn't know why some days. So the effort that you put um, into visiting her meant a lot to her and to you. It gave you some peace of mind knowing that you were going, she may not recognize who you are, but that had to make you feel wonderful. Yeah. And so like just seeing her, it, it made her feel wonderful. And there were days where, um, like on the day she couldn't remember me or we got in really cyclical conversations because at the time I was living in um, Beverly, Massachusetts. So when I would go and visit, she's like, oh, where are you living? And I was like, I'm in Beverly. And she would tell me like, oh, I've been to Beverly. My my aunt lived there. And it would be the same story every time. So to try and kind of break that cycle, I would be like, yeah, you told me that last time, Grammy. Um, I'm here to read you a book today. And so my grandmother was an avid reader. It's where I got my love of book from books from. And so I would bring out one of her favorites like Pride and Prejudice or a fun, cozy mystery. I think like it's called Blueberry Muffin Murder. And Aww. there's recipes in the cookbook. And she would love that. Cute. 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 Awesome. And yeah. kudos to you so, that you put that effort into it. Cause I do feel like sometimes family members don't put that much effort into it thinking, well, they're not going to know I'm there or not there, but this gave her a little warm moment with you. And it gave you uh, a moment to warm your heart, knowing you're doing the right thing. And she obviously knew you were someone important in her life. Right. Right. Yeah. And like, she was my best friend growing up. Like Aww. I grew up living upstairs and Grammy and grandpa were downstairs and so this was just something that we had in common. So I kept that bond going. Um, but something that I had learned from Olivia, again, after my grandmother passed, was that I wasn't alone. And even though I was with my family, but because of kind of that divide between my aunts who were her caregivers and the rest of the family, it kind of it felt like I was by myself. And so being able to talk to Olivia and seeing her support group, it was awesome to really just know that it, it wasn't just me feeling what I was feeling sometimes. And doesn't that make you feel wonderful, Olivia, just hearing that? Like how wonderful do you it feel does. knowing you're, you've made a difference? You've made a difference. And so what is something that you would like to share? What are a couple of things that if you had two seconds to share with our viewers and listeners? A piece of advice. A piece of advice or something that should be, they should be focusing on if they're a caregiver right now. So Not something to put you on the spot. similar to what, <laughs> one thing, I know that's hard. Um, kind of similar to what Kylie was saying. I 100% agree with that that you, um, they might not remember who you are, but they remember the feeling. And similar to what Kylie was saying, Connie said to me one time, it was really when she started kind of progressing. She would remember me. I, I, I mean, I spent all day, every day with her. And one day she said to me, I don't remember your name, but I remember your face. And it just, ripped my heart out knowing Aww. that she knew the feeling she just didn't know who i was anymore right. and so just holding on to if that's happening to you they still have the feeling they might not have your name but they know how you make them feel right and i know one of the things that tipa snow taught me as far as um dealing with those with alzheimer's and dementia very often they'll say i want to go home i just want to go home i want to go home this is not my home i want to go home and really what they're saying is I want to feel like I did when I was at home. They're not feeling like mm -hmm. they did when they were at home. They don't necessarily want to go back to the structure. They want that feeling of what they felt like at home. Mm -hmm. So very often you can say, well, what, what, are, what is it that you're missing? And how are you feeling? And what's the feeling? It's more like you said, they may not know your face. They may not know where they are, but they remember that warm feeling that you the, brought to them. The feelings are the last things they lose. Mm -hmm. It is the thing that they hold on to the longest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so kudos to you both, really. I mean, what you girls do are, it's wonderful. I think putting your, your life interest into what you're doing right now, Olivia, and changing people's lives like you did with Kylie and her family, um, that can do nothing but a pay it forward. You're, you're doing something that is just lovely to other families and to people with dementia that even for a few moments, if they can get a, a piece of feeling happy or content, you're doing that, and I, I applaud you for that. And from the caregiver thank side, you. from the caregiver side, as a caregiver, thank you, because the support is needed, 
and the guidance is needed. We often don't know that we need it, but it is. It is really needed. So I, I really applaud you for seeing a gap and filling it. So thank you. Because like they said, Thank those you. little tidbits that you share, they don't even realize they needed that tidbit until they heard it. And they were right. like, ah, that makes right. so much sense. It makes so much yeah. sense. And that really is the whole focus for our program is we love to bring people on like you that can make a difference in somebody's life. Um, a little a resource tidbit. someone didn't know existed. Exactly. And so because Shane and I both have been in so many networking groups and on boards, we have met so many people. And now with the show and, and being on Instagram, that's how I met you. And that's how we were able to yeah. get together and get on get on the same path, realizing we're both going in the right direction for the same thing. <laughs> and now you get to educate yeah. people all over the world. Which right. Is <laughs> right. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so again, we sp we spoke about our support group. Yes. So our support group is um, the third Thursday of every month. So it's actually this Thursday at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. at Allegro Senior Living in Boynton Beach. So please, you can reach out to us um, either via phone or email if you'd like to attend, or you can reach out to Allegro Senior Living directly. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you. Um, we are coming to the end of our show. So I want to thank you again to Olivia and Kylie. Thank you so much for zooming in today and being with us and sharing your story. And, um, and so many of you probably have a story out there. So if you go on to our Facebook page and see or Instagram and see um, the different shows that we've had in the past, you may have a product that you would like for us to talk about. You may have a skill like Olivia has on, on making things easier for those with dementia. Feel free to reach out to us because we love to have different guests. And as you can see, you don't have to live in South Florida. Right. We can have you on via, via video. Um, we actually, one of the things that we had at our, um, our charity event is we had a silent raffle. So Kathy Kessler, who's with Medicaid and more, and she also works for a care management company, um, won that. And so that's going to be fun to have her on in February. We're pretty much booked into May, but we do have other spots open that we would love to share whatever whatever skills you have or whatever you would like to share with us. Or like I said, if you if have a product. If you have a resource or know of a resource that we haven't talked about yet, or if you're out there and you're a caregiver um, and you're dealing with an issue that we haven't talked about yet or something you need help with, please reach out. Number one, we can connect you to a resource. And number two, if you're dealing with it, that means someone else out there is as well. And we'd love to we'd love to bring that issue to the forefront on one of our shows. And even having uh, caregivers on, you know, uh, Kylie talking about how she, what she did to assist with her grandma. Um, we love the family dynamics. We would love if you're a caregiver that's that you have found something that's really worked for you. We would love to have you on the show just to, like we said, you're not alone. Let's share your wealth with somebody else. Um, and that's why the support group has been so great with us yep. too. And again, um, the Partnership for Aging yes, event. Yes, our event, absolutely. Our fundraiser is November 15th at the Brews Room in Boynton Beach at 5 p.m. Again, you can go to www.pbcpfa dot org backslash events or reach out to us email phone instagram facebook youtube reach out to us and we'll give you all the information we'd love to have you and all the proceeds go to transportation for our disadvantaged seniors and if you're looking for care in the home and you live in south palm beach county um, senior helpers that's exactly what we do we put uh, trained caregivers they're certified home health assistants or or certified nursing assistants um, that we put in place. We would love to take care of you. We do respite care. We do, um, and even at our support group, we yes. offer respite care. Absolutely. Um, and Shane, a yes. caregiver, but she is also a. I am also a seniors real estate specialist. So I specialize in the 55 and over population. If you or a loved one um, need to sell your home to go into an assisted living or independent living community, I am happy to help. We are a concierge type of real estate group. So we will help with every aspect of it, whether you are local or not, we can assist. Or if you're uh, moving from out of state into one of our wonderful 55 plus active adult communities, um, that's where I specialize. So I'd love to help in any way I can. 
and our, our guest on our next show, which is Claudia Wechter, she does placement. So you'll have to be sure to tune into that because she's going to talk about the challenges of finding the perfect place for somebody that needs to go in assisted mm -hmm. living, independent living, or memory care. And there, a lot goes into it, so I'm really excited to have yes, her on our next yes. episode. You figure it's a very intimate move. It's somebody moving from their home that they've lived forever. Now they have to move into a community. So There's a lot of emotions that go into it. There's a lot of family dynamics. It's not just someone downsizing. Sometimes they're giving up their independence. That's when we had to have the conversation of, it's time to take away the keys, which is always the hardest conversation there is to have because um, you're really taking away, you know, what someone thinks is their independence. So it's a big, it's a big move. But again, we thank you, Kylie, and we thank you, Olivia. And again, congratulations, Olivia, for being a little brand new bride. Mm -hmm. And um, we just wish you well. We wish both of you well. And, and anything we can do to assist with what you do, we're happy to promote and anything you know, that we can talk and about. And continue, please continue yes. doing what you're doing yes. and continue supporting um, Making the caregivers a difference. and their loved ones and their families. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And to all of our listeners and our viewers, thank you for joining us today. And again, if there's anything you'd like us to discuss that we haven't or any resources that you know of that we may not, please reach out. Come back again. Thank you we'll for joining you us time. today on Senior Strategies. We hope that you found the tools and the strategies that we offered you beneficial for your journey as a caregiver. We want you to leave today feeling empowered and supported. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for upcoming shows and events. For more information, to schedule a consultation, or to join a support group, please contact us at 561-800-6654. And remember the strategies and tools you can use to, to make, make your, your journey, journey easier. easier.